Good day, ma'am. I am Mary Antoinette Arla Pesaros from BSTM 3A, Group of Gainsotan Cave. And I'll be the one to discuss the existing situation, marketing, promotion, and promotional actions. So, let's proceed to the discussion. Existing situation. Number one. Area physical profile. The site has two natural attractions which are the Ginsultan Cave with its subterranean river. The inside of the cave has a small in-cave waterfalls, paths, and impressive rock formations. The water coming out of the Ginsultan Cave flows down in cascades to form a natural lagoon which is the Ginsultan Waterfalls that has a refreshing cold fresh water. In addition, the area around the site is steaming with trees. Number two, the location or area. It is located at Barangay Cagnetuan, Maasin City, Philippines. Barangay Cagnetuan is situated at approximately 10.1557 and 124.9129 on the island of Leyte. Elevation at this coordinates is estimated at 2. 187.3 meters or 142.6 feet above mean sea level. Number three, climate. This city has a tropical climate. The month with the highest relative humidity is October, 84.46%. The month with the lowest relative humidity is April, 78.50%. The, the month with the highest number of rainy days is October, 26.93 days. The month with the lowest number of rainy days is April's, April 16.07 days. Summer starts here at the end of the June and ends in September. The best months to visit, to visit are February, March, April, May, June, and August. Number 4. The Geological Characteristics The western side of Southern Leyte, where Maasin belongs, has coral and limestone with marley fazos. It exhibits its topographic prominence in the form of north or northwest trending ridges. Slo solution channels and extensive caves are common features in the western half of the province. The classic rocks and the limestones are found overlaying the classic rocks with late Miocene and early Pliocene epochs. Number 5. Demography The household population of the Barangay Cagdituan in the 2015 census was 330 broken down into 66 households or an average of 5.00 members per household. According to the 2015 census, the age groups with the highest population in Barangay Cagdituan is in the ranges 10 to 14 and 15 to 19 with 47 individuals. Conversely, the age groups with the lowest population are in the ranges of 75 to 79 and 80 and over with one individual. The median age of 19 indicates that Half of the entire population of Barangay Cagnituan are aged less than 19, and the other half are over the age of 19. Number 6. Existing Infrastructure There is no existing infrastructure, infrastructure in the site. Number 7. Utilities There are no existing utilities on the site. Number 8. Transportation it is a three-hour road trip from Tacloban. From Tacloban, you may reach Maasin via bus or van. Tell the driver to drop, to drop you off in the town proper. There are also a car rental services in Tacloban. From the town proper, take a tricycle to Barangay Maria Clara. From Barangay Maria Clara, take a habal habal to Ginsuhut and Fall. Good day, ma'am. Allow me to present to you our tourism profile. Our tourism profile serves as the tourism situationer in the area and helps determine the level of development that can still be introduced in the site. This includes the present number of tourist facilities, hotels, inns, and homestays, and the tourist statistics in the site. So the first one is natural resource base. Under the natural resource base, we have the natural ecosystems, attractions natural and natural resources under the natural ecosystems we have Kinsutan cave and waterfalls mount kihabut mount hanginan hapitan beach and mangrove eco forest park busai falls and sagpon falls for the attractions we have talisay beach mercado beach lawis beach resort 
Dakong Bato sa Pugaling, Little Batanes of Pugaling, Little Denmark Beach, Nice View Overlook, Bay View Park, Espina Boulevard, and Danau Forest Park. For the last one is we have the natural resources and we have the Tinugdan Spring. So the next one is the cultural resource based. Under the cultural resource base, we have the cultural, histor cultural, historical, and archaeological sites. And then festival and events, and then the indigenous or ethnic cultures. Under the cultural, historical, archaeological sites, we have Monte Cueva Shrine, Maasin City Cathedral, Mama Mary Shrine in Halika Hills, Abiera Museo de Art, Francisco Javier Pilgrim Center and Maasin City Park and then the Sun King Garden. For the festivals and events, we have Sakai Sakai Festival, Ahunay Festival, Parol Festival, and for indigenous or ethnic cultures, we have Bajau. For transportation, Maasin has only one airport and that is Pananawan Airport. If by water, we have Kokalian Shipping Lines, Wisam Express, AP Cargo Maasin Branch, and then the Tugo Express. If by land, Maasin has Tricycle, Habal Habal, Jeepney, Bus, and Van. Next is Accommodation. Maasin City, Southern Leyte has a total of 25 establishments. There are six establishments that can be used for accommodation and 19 establishments that can be used for restaurant and dining place. A total of 25 establishments. Next is the tourism services. For facilities, we have hotel facility, health facility, and then banks. For hotel facility, we have Kaimito Beach Hotel. JV Hotel Maasin, Hymis Hotel, TW Pension, Kaos Beach House, Maasin City Country Lodge, Volia Romana Hotel, and Ampil Pension House. A total of 8 facilities. So for health facility, we have Living Hope Hospital, Southern Leyte Provincial Hospital, Malaya Medical Clinic, Maasin Maternity and Children's Hospital, Salvation Opus Iniguez, Memorial Provincial Hospital, Verano Maternity and Children's Hospital, Maasin City Health Unit, Southern Veterinary Doctor, Maasin Dental Spa, and then the DMD Tooth Works. For the banks, we have Allied Bank, Land Bank of the Philippines, Metro Bank, East West Coral Bank, China Bank, Asia United Bank, Asia Link Finance Corporation, Bank of the Philippine Islands, Southern Leyte Cooperative Bank, First Consolidated Bank, Rizal Commercial Banking Corporation, Development of the Philippines, Development Bank of the Philippines, and then the last one is the Philippine National Bank. So that would be all for the tourism profile. Thank you. Our vision is an emerging and important ecotourism and destination in Southern Leyte in the next five years, promoting maintenance and conservation of natural ecosystems by maintaining the water quality and protecting the biological diversity of the area, making it an exceptional tourism destination that would improve the quality life of the community. Our goal is, by 2026, make ecotourism as a vehicle for constituent cave and waterfalls protection and conservation that safeguards the integrity and diversity of its natural resources, provides education and enjoyment to visitors, and delivers larger and more widely distributed income and employment opportunities to the local communities and their constituents. Our management objectives is first, to develop Ginsuhotan Cave and Waterfalls as the next ecotourism site in Southern Leyte. Second, to instill among the local stakeholders the value of ecotourism and make them partners in the implementation of tourism, especially community-based ecotourism projects in Ginsuhotan Cave and Waterfalls. 
third is to ensure greater satisfaction of the Ginsuhotan Cave in Waterfalls tourists and visitors by experiencing a different brand of environment-friendly and sustainable ecotourism products and services. Fourth is to make ecotourism a vital instrument in the protection of Ginsuhotan Cave in Waterfalls biodiversity and physical resources and socio-economic development of the municipality of Mazin City. Our first management strategies of programs and projects is ecotourism products and services. Under this is making of the parking area for the site, then construction of reception booths, souvenir booths, and area for orientation. Another is construction of bridge, construction of store, cottages, comfort room, and shower area. And the last is construction of boardwalk, elevation deck, and watchtower. Our second is resources protection, conservation, and preservation. This is where we apply zoning by creating three stations on the site and install necessary markers and signages like rules and regulations to be observed, safety precautions for the waterfalls and cave, administrative signs, directional signs, interpretive signs, waste disposal system following the standard set by DNR. The third is the visitor management system. Under this, we create visitor management flow and then create reservation system, group limits, use limits, and length of stay. The fourth is local community participation. This is to orient the local community of Barangay Kagituan on the value and importance of an organized community, ecotourism as a tool for economic development and the need to protect and conserve the environment and natural resources. This is also to identify the initial group of communities or core communities who could be trained on managing and operating a community-based ecotourism project as a business enterprise. This is also to expose these communities like true study tours in successful community-based development projects in Southern Leyte to inspire them to engage in similar undertakings. And also to train the community on simple and basic accounting, auditing, and record or bookkeeping. The fifth is FAD mobilization. This is where to submit ecotourism-related project proposals to the LGU of Maasin City and related persons for possible funding. Second is set up and transfer fees, parking fees, user fees, and service fees. And last is the income from visitors, purchases from our souvenir items, food items, and photo services. The last management strategies, programs, or projects is the monitoring and evaluation. Under this, we form and monitor an evaluation team from individuals in DNR Protected Area Management Board, Tourism Officer of Maasin City, and the head of the local community. The second is prepare a monitoring template. Third is conduct a monthly monitoring of the progress of Ginsuhotan Cave and Waterfalls Ecotourism Management Plan implementation. The fourth is make unnecessary adjustments in the implementation of specific activities in the Ginsuhotan Cave and Waterfalls Ecotourism Management Plan per findings of the monitoring team. And the last is execute suggestions and recommendations of the evaluation team. I'm Lyra Mibitor and I'm assigned in presenting site plan and zoning to capacity building. So let's start with site plan and zoning. A good zoning plan and careful siting decisions can separate user conflicts and minimize environmental disturbances of tourism. A zoning system can ensure that tourism activities take place at a sustainable level that maximizes benefits and limits negative impacts. So for our site plan, the site will be divided into three stations. Station 1 is where the parking area, memory board, souvenir shop, entrance gate, and visitor center will be put up. This is where visitors and tourists can register and have an orientation before they are allowed to do their preferred ecotourism activities in Ginsuhutan Cave and Waterfalls. Station 2 is where the waterfalls is situated. Facilities like store, cottages, composting toilet, shower rooms, boardwalk, and elevation deck will be put up for tourist use. Apart from this, a watchtower will also be put up for the lifeguards. 
Station 3 is where the subterranean cave is situated and activities like spelunking, canyoneering, boating will be done. Next is, we will install a guide map of the site to orient visitors about locations of these facilities. Guide map allows summarizing complex and important information into a clear and compact presentation. Next is we will install necessary markers and signages like rules and regulations to be observed, safety precautions for waterfalls and the cave, administrative signs, directional signs, and interpretive signs. We also have a waste disposal system following standards set by the DENR. So you may ask why is this important? This is because signages can attract visitors. It provides direction and wayfinding as well as informs and educate. A good signage also provides customers with subtle but important communication cues which increases brand awareness. So next is the visitor management system. The following visitor management schemes in Ginsu Huden Cave and Waterfalls is to ensure less impact in the natural resources and satisfaction of visitors. The system also mitigates uncertain and unsafe events. In other words, the visitor management system creates a safety framework for both visitors and the managing community of the site. So first, we have the reservation system. So the reservation system will help to maintain the maximum number of people allowed in the site per day. So our rule is, if the visitors have no reservation, they will not be entertained. The site will only entertain one to three bookings per day, but that will depend on the number of persons each booking has. For example, if the first booking has already 10 people in it and the second booking has already 15 people in it, then we will not accept a third booking since the number of people is already 25, which is our maximum limit. Next one is the visitor management flow. The, the importance of having this system is to keep a record of visitors, especially that we're still under a pandemic, we need to know who is in the site for easy contract tracing. But aside from that reason, this system flow also helps in directing people traffic, as well as in recognizing the needs of the visitors. Most often, that's providing directions. Simple instructions substantially improve the visitor experience by grounding it. So for a visitor flow, we'll have to do temperature checking, QR code checking since again, we're still under a pandemic. Then log in, paying the fees needed, grab equipment, orient and orientation. So this will be done in station 1. Right after that, visitors will proceed to station 2 and 3 to enjoy the activities and check out right after 4.30 p.m. Now let's proceed to group size limit. So group size limit is setting a maximum number of people allowed in the site. So this is just the same with creating capacity. For instance, only a maximum of 25 per persons shall be allowed on Ginsu Huten Cave and waterfalls. Then use limit. This is quite related to group size limit but this is a direct restriction on the number of visitors that may enter a specific area in the ecotourism site which is in this case that will be in station 3 where the subterranean cave is situated. For instance, when there is another group belonging in Station 3, other visitors will not be allowed to enter and will stay in the holding area in Station 2. Then, area closure. So this includes prohibiting all or some types of tourists to use a particular area in the destination. Area closures on the site will be on Station 3, specifically in areas in the cave that are not yet explored. And then, Length of stay limits. This sets the amount of time an individual or group may stay on the site. For instance, no one will be allowed to stay overnight on the site. By 5 p.m., the area should be cleared. Next is equipment requirements. So this strategy obliges tourists to carry specialized equipment for environmental or safety reasons. For example, visitors must have an appropriate safety gear, example, flashlight, life jacket, and helmet, and exploring the site. We also have providing site information. So another way to manage visitors is providing is by providing them with data, facts, and advice about the sites. It's biology, geology, locations of visitor facilities, maps, and rules and regulations. So this may result in more visitors adopting appropriate behaviors, reducing impacts, and providing them with a more satisfying visit. 
This will be done on the orientation before entering the site. Lastly, we have installing administrative, directional, and interpretive signs. So this will involve providing information to visitors in such a way that they will be encouraged to learn and gain more appreciation. This is for visitors to understand and appreciate the values for which a tourism site was established. Also, directional signs will be put up to provide easy accessibility to the site. Now let's move on to site activity management. First is to formulate an issue, P-A-M-B-D-E-N-R, issuances and resolutions which shall serve as a basis for the identification of revenue generating me mechanisms, example, entrance fees, caving fees, and other user fees. Next is put in place policies for Ginsuhutan Cave and waterfalls to designate official trekking trails enforce restricted and prohibited activities and properly promote ecotourism in the site without jeopardizing its con conservation values and then construct physical structures example of this are view decks watchtowers boardwalks signages cottages photo booth reception booth souvenir booth store this is to support ecotourism enterprise in Ginsu Hutan Cave and Waterfalls. Next is to pursue partnerships with the local government units and non-government organizations and private group associations on promoting ecotourism in Ginsu Hutan Cave and, and Waterfalls. Now let's proceed to ecotourism business opportunities. So I just want to emphasize that commerce, which is part of the five C's of ecotourism, is really crucial in the continuous development and management of the site, since it is the one who will fund the site's conservation and community benefit. So we will be able to do that by doing the following. First is to set up entrance fees, parking fees, and service fees. Then operate tourism facilities and utilities like shower rooms, comfort rooms, and cottages with its user fees. As I've mentioned earlier, we will build a store and that will be put up in Station 2 where the waterfalls and cottages are situated. So it will have food and drink products, especially delicacies from the province. Next, we have the souvenir shop. Of course, so it will sell products like t-shirts, keychains, fridge, souvenir magnets, anklets, and backpack patches with the facade of the of the Ginsuhutan Falls and Cave printed in it. Next is the site management will offer photo opportunities with print service. So visitors can put their printed photos on the site memory board at the entrance area or they can take it home for memories. Then we will set up a trust fund for the collected resources. So this is to ensure that the money collected will be in a good and secure hands. Lastly, we will form a trust fund management body to decide and monitor the use of funds for the site. So here is our proposed minimum rates for local and foreign visitors in Ginsuhutan Cave and Waterfalls, which is based on what DENR had set. So for the entrance fee, it's 30 pesos for adults, 15 pesos for students, and 0 pesos for PWD, senior citizens, and children below 7 years old, while it's 100 pesos for foreigners. For the cottages, it's 100 pesos per day. For the gears, which includes helmet, flashlights, and life, life jacket, it's 150 pesos. For the tour guide, it's 200 pesos per group. Then for the photo services, it's 100 pesos for three shots, which includes its print fee. For the souvenir, that will be around 25 pesos to 300 pesos. This will include t-shirts, keychains, anklets, fridge, souvenir magnets, and backpack patches, as I've mentioned earlier. So for the parking area, it's 20 pesos for four wheels vehicle and 10 pesos for motorcycles. For the shower rooms, it's 5 pesos, composting toilet, 5 pesos. Well, the caving, along with other activities like boating, canyoneering, and rappelling, it's 250 pesos for Filipinos and 500 pesos for foreigners. Now, let's move on to capacity building. So, capacity building is all about developing and strengthening the skills, instincts, abilities, 
processes and resources that organizations and communities need to survive, adopt, and thrive in making Ginsu Hutan Cave and Waterfalls as an established ecotourism site in Southern Leyte. To do this, we have to do the following. First is to orient the community of Barangay Cagnituan on the value and importance of an organized community for the economic development and the need to protect and conserve the environment and natural resources in the area. Next is to identify the initial group of communities or core communities who could be trained on managing and operating a community-based ecotourism project as a business enterprise. And then, we will expose these communities through study tours and successful community-based development projects in Southern Leyte to inspire them to engage in similar undertakings. Next is to employ or tap the services of some of the community members in any other ecotourism-related activities like tour guiding, site management, handling, and etc. We'll also train the community on simple and basic accounting, auditing, and record bookkeeping. And lastly, we will develop ways to regularly measure progress by tracking achievements and maintaining the momentum necessary for the success of the community-based ecotourism enterprise. Marketing actions. Identify and define the target market. The market will be dependent on our attractions, activities, products, and services being offered in our chosen ecotourism sites. Another is develop a marketing plan. The plan should be able to define and identify the target market and clientele. Next is design a logo and formulate, formulate a slogan depicting the branding for ecotourism in Ginsuotan Cave and Waterfalls. Create a guide about the chosen site. Travelers are the lifeblood of the tourism industry. Therefore, tourism marketing needs to be focused on visitors' wants and needs. Make the guide easy to read and understand. Make it skimmable. No matter how good is it is, very few people will read it word for word. Include lots of ideas for things and to do things to do and places to see, as well as all of the other information you feel is important to know about your area. Promotional actions. First is develop a dedicated website or social media account network such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, blog, website, etc. This is immediate because social media is the trend nowadays. Print and distribute posters, brochures, pamphlets, flyers, stickers, coffee table books, and related print materials about the Ginsultan Cave and Waterfalls to travel magazines, newspapers, radio, and the internet. Travel magazines and newspapers publish, publish information on tourism attraction is free of charge on local radio, local radio and television stations, station broadcasts such as information as a public service. This can all be useful sources of free publicity for the site. Most publications can be accessed by the internet and the information transferred in this manner. Next is contact tour operators directly. This is a useful means of interesting them on the site. Tour operators are always on the lookout for new attractions to sell to their clients. Operators, particularly companies that specialize in activities offered at the site, will appreciate receiving a brochure and information about the local community. That will be all. Thank you. So next is the institutional arrangement. The overall implementation of the Ginsuhutan Cave and Waterfalls Ecotourism Management Plan will be undertaken by PAM, or the Protected Area Management Board. Under the direction of the DE, DENR, the Department of Environmental and Natural Resources, in close coordination and collaboration with the Municipality of Maasin City through their Municipal Tourism Office. So, since our protected areas provide the natural resource base for ecotourism development, it is necessary to provide the basic facilities and equipment that will cater not only the needs of the visitors but also the needed to strengthen, the, to strengthen resource, 
resource protection and minimize impact of visitor activities to the protected area. So next is engage in human resources development. It is important so that we can identify the right people for each role to programs that give employees more ways to collaborate and communicate. The Human Resources Department supports employees' morale and helps employees develop a deeper commitment to the company and its goals. So we plan to train existing and duly recruited staff on office management and their functions, roles, and responsibilities. Particular attention should be given to value re reorientation, communication skills, team building, environmental conservation, visitor management, and dealing with local communities. The next one is to establish a reward and punishment system to recognize good performances and discourage bad ones. The next one is to send staff to study, orientation tours, Field visits to make them aware of other approach, approaches in ecotourism development and management. Next is to establish network and coordination mechanisms. We plan to harness the DNR, PAM, and Municipal Tourism Office in establishing the network and coordination with private, private academ, civic, and other social organizations. Next is to link with tour operators and other tourism-related establishments in developing new ecotourism products and services, promotion and marketing, fund sourcing, and etc. Next is to get local people and community organizations to be actively involved in ecotourism development. For monitoring and evaluation, we we plan to conduct regular monitoring. We plan to form an, an M and E team from the general membership of the Protected Area Management Board or PAM, Tourism Officer of the Maasin City and the head of the local community. Next is we plan to prepare a monitoring template. Next is conduct a monthly monitoring of the progress of Kim Sufutan Cave and Waterfalls Ecotourism Management Plan implementation. And the last one is to make a necessary adjustment in the implementation of specific activities in the Ginsu Hutan Cave and Waterfalls Ecotourism Management Plan per findings of the monitoring team. Hello, good day. I'm Guzan Jennifer F. And I'm the one who assigned to present the action plan and monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring and evaluation, or M&E, shall start when the Ginsuhutan Cave and Waterfalls Ecotourism Management Plan commence implementation. M&E will be instrumental in identifying problems, impacts, and benefits, as well as in ensuring the effective and sustainable implementation of the management plan. Through the M&E, the extent to which the Ginsuhutan Cave and Waterfalls Ecotourism Management Plan is meeting its objectives could be determined and therefore corrective measures if problems occurred are immediately applied. So, conducting a regular monitoring on the site, this will further explain later on the list of strategies in the action plan. In our action plan, we assume that our all strategies listed here in our plan start by January 2022. For the implementation date is five years started from 2022 to 2026. Our first list project is making of the parking area for the site. We assigned the community of Barangay Kagrituan with the supervision of its officials for the implementing office because it's a parking area, assuming that the committee of Barangay officials will work for this. The expected outcome is for the security or the protection of the vehicles of the tourists. Then, the construction of reception booth, souvenir booth, and area for orientation in Station 1. Implemented also by the community of Barangay Kagrituan with the supervision of its officials, the LGU, with the committee, the tourism office, and the PAM. The expected outcome is that we have reception booth, souvenir booth, and area of orientation that are already constructed and established in Ginsohodan Cave and Waterfalls. Same as with the construction of bridge, construction of store, cottages, comfort room, and shower area, construction of boardwalk, elevation deck, and watchtower in Station 2. Also implemented by the community of Barangay Kagmituan with the supervision of its officials, the LGU with the committee, and the tourism office and the PAM. 
The expected output are, of course, already constructed and established in Ginsuhotan Cave and Waterfalls. Other project is to apply zoning by creating three stations in the site. The outcome is to ensure that tourism activities take place at, at a sustainable level that maximizes benefits and limits negative impacts. This is to disperse the tourists at the area for the sustainability and for the protection of the sites. Then, waste disposal system, the expected outcome is for the proper management of waste. Next is the installing necessary markers and signages like rules and regulations to be observed, safety precautions for the waterfalls and cave, administrative signs, directional signs, interpretive signs, waste disposal system following the standards set by the DENR. It's nice to install markers to attract the tourists and to well maintain their area to provide direction and wayfinding as well as to inform and educate the visitors. So this will be the expected outcome. For the orientation of local community of Barangay Kagutuan on the value and importance of an organized community, ecotourism as a tool for economic development and the need to protect and conserve the environment and natural resources. This will to participate effectively in tourism development activities. Their capacities have mobilized as social actors rather than as passive subjects. We assume that local community actively participate in this project because for the orientation, they likely know what would be the benefit for the sites. After all, it's all for their sake. Then, identify initial group of communities who could be trained on managing and operating a community-based ecotourism project as a business enterprise. So these are the core communities or a group of capable and goal-oriented people has formed. Exposed communities through studies in successful community-based development projects. This will cater to the core committee to attend seminar in order to enhance or develop their projects and to wider knowledge about for the community development. Train the community on simple and basic accounting, auditing, and record or bookkeeping. Assuming that after the training, they'll know how to manage the basic accounting, the auditing, and the record keeping or the bookkeeping. Submit ecotourism related project proposals to the LGU of Maas and City and related persons for the possible funding. If ever the project proposal submitted, assuming that fund has been provided to be done in the site. Setting up for the entrance fees, parking fees, user fees, and service fees. The expected outcome is to have a continuous flow of funding for ecotourism development. The most important or the main goal of the business here is to fund the ecotourism because if ever the fund will stop, it will be ruined everything. Just like the other ecosites who stopped because of the pandemic, they don't have a fund left to maintain the ecosites and this will also cater to the Kisultan game if ever the fund will stop. As well as the income from visitors' purchases from our souvenir items, food items, and food services. This will also to have a continuous flow of funding for ecotourism development. Then, form an evaluation and monitoring team. The goal here is to improve the project and org organizational performance for achieving goals. This will to know that our strategy we make is effective or not, or our strategy we make is failed. So, we need to redo the strategy in order to achieve our goals. Prepare a monitoring template. This will to identify the key factors in monitoring the site, like preparing a monitoring sheet or checklist that if they want to monitor the site, this template will be used in order to guide where to monitor the area and an organized monitor so that nothing will be forgotten. Conduct a monthly monitoring of the progress of Kinsuotan Cave. As what I've said, conducting a monitoring to the site in a month in order to reveal the issues and gaps of the site. Lastly, making a necessary adjustment in the implementation of specific activities in the Ginsuhotan game. These are the issues that reveals to the monitoring sheet that need to change to the monitoring team. The expected outcome is of course the issues and gaps that we've seen is being addressed. Thank you.